We're so happy today to have Bobby Connor back yes. with us. Yes. The founder of Eagle View Ministries, one of our dear friends. Yeah. Lori and I, Love uh, so much. just before we were married, you got to meet the Connor. I did. Got to meet Bobby and Carolyn and so just some of the greatest people you will ever know in your entire life. And we are so thrilled to have Bobby Connor back with us again today. One thing I always say when Bobby's with us is that like, I have my notepad ready right here, folks. Yeah. Get your notepad ready. You can hardly write the scriptures down that he quotes by memory, the word of God. And I write those scriptures down as fast as I can. And I go back and read them. He has a them. true prophetic gift. A true Amen. gift. Yes. True prophetic gift very much and he's the author of numerous books including the annual publication the shepherd's rod yes bobby served as a southern baptist pastor for 27 years bobby and carolyn have been oh my god married for 50 <laughs> years i can't believe it i didn't know he was over 50 years old <laughs> and they have two sons and five grandchildren Aww. and uh, welcome to our program our great friend bobby connor Amen. Thank you so much, Jim and Lori. We're just we're delighted to be here. Been looking forward to this time. Been missing you a lot. But I tell you what, a day to be alive. Esther four fourteen says we are in the kingdom for such a time as this. Now the only thing I think that's more exciting than that is the kingdom is in us for such a time as this. We're going to have a great time on the program today. We're going to be talking about the what is God doing and why He's doing it and who He's doing it with. And we've got to find out where we are and how did we get here and where do we need to go? And prophets are supposed to give direction. There's, the Bible tells us that. The Bible says God won't do a single thing without first revealing what he's going to do to his servants of prophets. So I am delighted to be here looking forward to it. That's why it's so important that we train the body of Christ to listen to what the prophet says. The Bible says, if you'll trust the Lord, you'll be established, believe his prophets, and you will prosper. The word prosper there is a great word. It means live at God's highest pointed level for your life. And all of us want to do that, don't we? And God really does use the prophets. And I'm thankful that we have an opportunity to have a program like yours that you share what the prophets are saying. And Right now, it seems like there's almost a war in the church. Well, the, this is the apostles are against the prophets. That's not, that's not how it's going to be. We're going to be moving right in the midst of Psalms 133, verse 1. How pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It'll be like that anointing that came upon the head of Aaron, and it says it, that it dripped down off of his beard and ran off of his skirt. When we get to working together, it's going to release a lavish, radical anointing that's going to really be tangible and very, very uh, needful in the body of Christ. So I believe that God has given uh, uh, much information about the times that we're living in and how to really make these days count. We have got to redeem the time and make full use of every opportunity. And I believe that uh, we're uh, really going to see a move of God in our nation and in our land that's going to impact the whole world, but we're going, it's going to be a battle. And so we'll talk about that when we get uh, into the program. Was there a banner in your life or in your ministry that triggered your interest in Bible prophecy and like, when did you know that God was using you prophetically? Oh, uh, well, actually, he would uh, uh, show me things. When I was a little bitty boy, five years old, uh, I walked down in the woods behind my mother's house. And uh, I, it seemed like a mile, but uh, later on, I realized it was probably two or three hundred yards. But I'm five-year-old little Texas kid. And I walked down there and I'm, I'm laying down under some pine tree, uh, some huge, gigantic pine trees. And uh, here's, here's what I said. And I was referring to the fact that my brother and sister had gone to school that day. And this was the first time I'd ever been uh, at, at home without one of my siblings to play with. So that's what I was mad about. So I go down there and I sit down and I lay down on my tummy on the, the leaves under the pine tree. And I said this with my mouth. Well. I guess I'll have to be by myself. When I said that, Jim, a wind came and got in the field next to me and started spinning like this. A spinning wind, and the spinning wind came and got in the top of the pine tree, and out of the spinning wind, a voice spoke, a voice that shook and said, No, Bobby, you'll never be by yourself. See? And when he said that, the heavens 
where the stars are roll back just like that. And I could see what looked like uh, to me burning horses, horses with their manes and the tails on fire, running back and forth across heaven. They were angels, but I'm a five-year-old little Texas kid, and it looked like burning horses. But that's the first time I realized there is something much bigger than us and much more dynamic than us. And so that I, I, it's really like in the book of uh, Jeremiah where it says, before I formed in the belly, I knew you. Before you came out of your mommy's tummy, I ordained you and sanctified you to be a prophet to the nations. Jim, my first experience was my mother, this is 1948, 1947, and my, my, my mother is desperate, 1943. I'll get it right here in a minute. 1943, my mother's pregnant. My dad's dying in a mental institution from a venereal disease. The doctors tell my mother, the baby inside your belly will be afflicted with the same disease, uh, killing his father. Now, my mother already had two children. My brother, Glenn, a year older than me, and my sister, Kay. Glenn was born crippled, uh, crumbling of the hip bones, and couldn't walk. So mother was desperate. She didn't want me to suffer like my dad was. So this is the truth. She took a coat hanger, turned it into a hook, opened her womb, and stuck the coat hanger in. So help me God, the hand of Jesus came and pushed me aside and kept my mother from extracting my life out of, out of her belly. Now, this is true. She was not doing it to be uh, mean. She was trying to be merciful, honestly, in a very uh, uh, weird way. But uh, my mother came to one of the conferences that I was doing and saw the power of God. And she tried to tell me all about the attempted abortion uh, thing. But I'd already told my wife about it before my mother ever told me. But anyway, uh, I'm here on divine assignment, just to be quite honest. But everybody is. God created things for us to do before he created us. Ephesians 2.10. That's a great, I read Ephesians 2.10 out of every English translation I could find in the Bible. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God pre-planned, pre-ordained that we conduct ourselves in them. What does that say to us? Jim, it says God created things for us to do before he created us. Man, that shows us that we've got purpose. We've got power. We're not just here. Uh, we've got a reason for being here. We're, we're put on this earth to be world changers. Our main thrust should be Matthew 6, 33. That's seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things. These temporary things will be added unto you. Our main focus is exalting the king and his kingdom. We love it. Yeah. We love wow, it, man. You started hearing from God at five years Amazing. old, but you've, you've hung out with the prophets and you've been ministering as a prophet for so long. And you recently attended the prophetic round table at Morningstar Ministries. Yes. With Rick Joyner. Can you give us an update on what the prophets are focusing on right now? Yeah, I, I, I really will. Uh, we had a great uh, roundtable. Rick has hosted it there for a number of years. I've gone to every one of his roundtables uh, since he started them. And here's basically what we talked about. We talked about how that the church needs to uh, really wake up and realize, I think we had kind of a... Um, I, uh, we got a little off step, I think, thinking, well, if we get Donald Trump back in there, everything would be all right. Listen, I love Donald Trump, uh, I'm telling you, but our, we've got to make sure we're looking to the Lord. And so we're, we're, we're talking about raising up the church to realize they need to love America. There is forces at work to dissolve America, uh, dis disintegrate America as we've known it. Uh, it's the craziest thing you've ever seen when you get to looking at what's going on. But we here's the, here's the main one of the main focuses of the the prophetic roundtable. We've got to wake up the church to realize we're at war for the very soul of this nation. We're going to have to get back to biblical basis, and we're going to have to get back to biblical truth, and we've got to stand up for righteousness. The Bible says the, our problem in America, I think, is Isaiah 520. Woe unto the nation that finds it easy to call good evil and evil good, who substitute bitter for sweet, and just the under, and that's where we are. And there's some of the craziest laws being passed, and you and I, we cannot sit on the sidelines and go, well, I hope that changes. We're going to have to pray and be militant, and, and we're going to have to go at, uh, at war against the principalities and the rulers of darkness. we got to take our stand as soldiers and take a real stand for Christ. The Bible said the weapons of our war 
warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's what we got to do. America is falling under a stronghold of deception. And I'll tell you when we've got this misinformation, I've said it for years, the modern day media in America should be tried for treason. I looked up the word treason. It means the attempted overthrow of a setting government. And boy, if they're not, they hadn't been guilty of that, uh, I'd like to know who, it, who is. But anyway, uh, we've got to find out who, where we are, how we need to get to where we need to go. And one of the main things that we were talking about, it's wonderful to have plans and strategies, but if we don't move from just strategies to implementation and mobilization, it's fantasy. We've got to not be just like Saul's army. Remember Saul's army when Goliath for 40 days would come off the mountainside uh, ready for battle and he would scream at the armies of Saul, who wants to fight? And they didn't want to fight. It says in your Bible, when they heard him, they trembled, the soldiers of Saul. When they heard him, they trembled. When they saw him, they fled. But here comes young David. That's what we got to do. We got to raise up some warriors that have a heart to contend for what God's given us. Young David comes up and Goliath lumbers down. Who wants to fight? And David goes, I will. Is there not a cause? I will. And boy, that's what we got to do. We got to say to the church, is there not a cause? Aren't we, really, aren't we ready to confront the Goliaths that's standing on our way to dissolve our nation and to uh, steal our uh, destiny that God has for us? We got to wake the warriors and we got to oil the shields. I was waiting on the Lord and the Lord said, Bobby, uh, I want you to sound alarm and awaken the warriors. Tell them it's time to arise and oil the shields. That's in the Bible, isn't it? It's, I'll read it to you. It's Isaiah chapter 21, verse 5 and 6. It says, they prepared the tables, they spread the rugs, and having set the watchers, the revelers take no other precautions. They eat and they drink. Arise, you princes, and all your shields, for your deadly foe is at the gate. Wow. It's not a time just to sit back and go, ah. No, it's time for us to all the shields, the shield of faith especially, because whatever's not of faith is sin. And I'm telling you, we walk by what? Faith and not by sight. And I'm telling you, faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. We need a new uh, infusion of faith that God can do anything. Genesis 18, 14 says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? What's the answer to that question? The answer to that question is Job 42, 2. I know, God, you can do anything. Anything you heart, set your heart and your hand to do cannot be stopped. And that's a great one. Look, Genesis 18, 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Luke 1, 37 says, with men, things are impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. Don't ever forget, we've got a God that's almighty. Almighty. I like that, don't you? Aren't you glad there's nobody above God? He's almighty. He, he says, I'm El Shaddai, the God that's more than you'll ever have need of. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to train the people to come to their source. We, we've got to get them to put their focus on the Lord. Isaiah 26, 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Trust in the Lord Jehovah, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting, never failing peace. We've got to keep, we've got to get the peace of God. How do we get the peace of God? We get into the presence of the Prince of Peace. Isn't it uh, Psalm 1611? Psalm 1611 says something dramatic happens when we get into the presence of God and the presence of God gets into us. Here it is, Psalm 1611. It says, "In your, you will show me the pathway of life and in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Think about that, the right hand of God. Where's Jesus seated? the right hand of God. And I'm telling you guys, we need to find out God has some big plans for us. One time, Jesus Christ appeared to me, Jim, and Lord, here's what he said to me. He said, Bobby, I give you my personal permission to attempt to exaggerate what I'm about to do. Me being a preacher, I said, now, you know, I'm going to need a verse for that. Him being God said, no problem, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or dare to imagine according to the power that works within you. Wow, God has put a power inside of you. The same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you and dwells in me. And listen, you know, the Lord told me something one time. He said, Bobby, tell the body of Christ the gifts of the Spirit are tools, not toys. We need to use the gifts of the Spirit to build up the kingdom of God. And that's what it says. Without Jesus, without the Holy Ghost, we can't do a single thing. 
Not a single thing. Isn't that amazing? He said, John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. Whoa, nothing. Nothing means, uh, the Greek word nothing means a big vacuum, a zero with a vacuum sucked in it. But Philippians 4 says, with him, through him, by him, in him, we can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who infuses me with inner strength. Well, uh, I'm excited about being here. And so I want to just talk to you now. You ask about what the, the prophet said. said we need to focus more on uh, getting the people mobilized. Mobilized. Uh, General Borking was there in the, in the round table. So I stopped the round table and I asked him a, a very pointed question. I said, sir, you're a military man. You know all about this terminology. I want to know something. I want to know what is the definition of mobilization. Mobilizing is getting the troops to the most advantageous place for victory. Getting the troops to the most advantageous place to engage the enemy for victory. And so that's what the church has got to do. We cannot and will not sit on the sidelines. You and I today are forging the future our grandchildren will live in. God created us and established us to be world changers. I'm telling you, the power of proclamation, the book of Job says uh, this, says, acquaint now thyself with God, be at peace, and good will come to you. The Bible said, Job 22, 28, if you will decree it, God will establish it. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I like that. I was in a meeting once, and I quoted that verse, Job 22, 28. Uh, you shall de decide a thing, and then you decree what you've decided, and the Lord will establish it, and the light of his favor will shine upon your path. We're here to change this world. And America is in a battle for the soul of this nation. And how this nation goes will affect the whole world. And here, here's our problem. We've got, some, we've got the far left in charge not now. Well, they think they're in charge uh, in the White House, in the political arena. But I'm telling you what, uh, that God is about to show his hand, and he's about to show himself strong, and he's going to shake down. Here's what he told me. He said, you thought I was just going to cut down the tree. But he said, Bobby, I'm going after the rotten roots. I'm going after the rotten roots. I'm, I'm digging up the roots so this thing will never sprout again. But God has, is going to wake up America, and he's going to cause us to really let our light shine, and we're going to really turn away from this. I don't know why the church is so cowardly. The Bible said the righteous will be as bold as a lion. That's what it says in Amos. Amos 3.8 says, a lion has roared in the streets. Who can but prophesy? I'll tell you what happened. The devil, the devil gets us off into compromise, off into compromise and trying to be people pleasers, and we lose the power of God. I tell the preachers, I'd rather be biblically accurate than politically correct, don't you think? Because we're not going to answer to the people. One day we're going to answer to God for how we've handled the Word of God. And we're, we're in a season now when truth has fallen in the streets. That's in the Bible. It says truth has fallen in the streets. And we've got to really uh, understand we got to rescue truth so truth can rescue us. That's what it says. It said you'll know the truth and the truth of what? Set you free. And John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them, the people of God, sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. So Jim, we've got to be real, real soldiers of the truth. We got to, having done all, all stand, to stand, stand. And you know how that is. You've seen opposition. You've seen where people were always trying to belittle. But listen, if God be for us, who can be against us? We are what? More than conquerors. I like that. Uh, where he had to come up with a whole new word, Hooper Nike, super overcomers. I want you to know, get rid of that defeated mentality of, well, I could have, but I should have, I didn't. It's too, it's never too late. I'm telling you, God, the Bible says, Psalms 30, verse 5, weeping may last of the night, but joy comes in the morning. What God is doing now, he's trying to align us to the place we can really get the glory of God upon our lives, and it's a new day. We got to embrace the dawning of a new day. Lamentation 3.20 says, God's mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And that's what we've got to do. The devil talks people into sin and then badgers them the rest of their life with that failure. God, God knows all about the failure. Bring it to him. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, you may say, well, oh, I don't want to get into that kind of stuff. We better do it. If my, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven 
I will forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. We cannot continue this uh, this 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 thing of uh, just one foot in the world, one foot in the church. God said a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. The Bible said, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. We have got to wake the people up. We can't be spectators on the sidelines. We got to be warriors on the front lines. And like, like young David said, is there not a cause? And you know, he came out against Goliath and Goliath had a belly laugh. And what happened though? God, God was victorious. And if we'll take a stand, if we'll be a history maker, God will take, you'll never take a stand without God. Jo, isn't it, uh, Joshua 1, 7 through 9 says, be bold, be brave, be very courageous. Go do what you're called and commissioned to do because you're not going by yourself. Now, I'll tell you what, I want us to read, uh, well, if it's okay, I want to read about the uh, truth falling in the street. You want to? You say, yes, Bobby, that'll be good. Uh, uh, I, okay, uh, let me find it here. I got it. Uh, it, it says this. It says that, uh, uh, I'm going to read it out of the uh, Living Translation. Our courts oppose the righteous, and justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the street and honestly has been outlawed. Being honest has been outlawed. Verse 15 says, yes, truth is gone, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. Does that sound like the council culture? Does that sound like where we're living today? Uh, let me read this. I want to just slow down and read this again. Here we go. I'm reading out of Isaiah 59, verse 14 through 16, the New Living Translation. And listen to what it says. Our courts oppose the righteous. Is that happening? Look what's happening in the Supreme Court. Look what's happening in lower courts. The courts are what? Opposing the righteous. And justice is nowhere to be found. Truth stumbles in the street and honestly has been outlawed. Being honest, being an honest person has been outlawed. Look what it says in verse 15. Yes, truth is gone and anyone who rena renounces evil is attacked. The Lord looked and was displeased to find there was no justice. Oh man, that's right where we are today. You stand for righteousness, they'll mock you, they'll make fun of you, they call you a, a, a terrorist. I'm telling you guys, we have got to raise some patriotic Christians that will stand for liberty, stand for our nation, because you cannot, no nation can have, you can't have Christianity and communism. It just won't work, but that's what's after. The far left is pushing all they can to bring in communism and socialism. It won't work. It's never worked anywhere. It won't work here. But you and I are going to stand up as soldiers, and we're not going to let it happen. Isn't that something? Uh, justice is turned away backwards and righteousness is uprightness and right. Standing with God stands afar off. For truth has fallen in the streets, in the city forum, and the unrighteous cannot enter in the courts of justice. I'm telling you guys, we're going to have to take a stand for truth so truth can take a stand for us. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We've got to get back to truth. I, I am shocked at what some preachers preach claiming to be the truth. I'm telling you guys, we need sound doctrine so we won't be tossed to and fro like chips on a, a troubled sea. We need sound doctrine. We need preachers that'll stand up. And uh, some of this super seeker friendly mess, I wouldn't give two cents for it. We have got to talk about the real issues in the Bible. And I'm telling you, we got times when people go, well, you know, same sex marriage is okay. And, and we, we, better, we better stand up and understand there's, there's laws trying to be passed these, this week that'll muffle the mouth of the church. Uh, I'm telling you guys, we better stand up for truth and shout it out because they want to silence us. They want to eradicate our, our foundation. The, in the Shepherd's Rock 2020, the Lord told me, said, the number one priority is firm foundation. We have got to get the people of God back upon the firm foundation. Jesus said it this way, if you build upon what I say, the word of God, the biblical, said no firmer foundation can any man lay than that which is laid in Christ. And he said, if we build upon uh, the sand, the winds will come, the rains will fall in our house and disintegrate. But if we'll build upon the solid rock, don't you like the solid rock? Woo, I like the solid rock. That's what we got to do. We got to have stability. Don't you want stability? I know you do. Listen, God wants us to walk in the spirit. It says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's emancipation and freedom. 
we have got to get into the Spirit of God and let the Spirit of God get into us. So that's some things I'd like to share with you about the, the round table. We've got to, again, announce what the role and the responsibility of the prophets are. Listen to what the Bible said. We have, God won't do a single thing on planet Earth without first revealing what he's going to do to his servants, the prophets. It's absolutely imperative that the prophets hear from heaven and then begin to sound out. To be a prophet, uh, a successful prophet, you need to be a seer and a sayer. You see what God, Habakkuk says, I will set up on my watch to see what the Lord will say. So we've got to see what God is doing. We've got to hear what God is saying and translate it to the people. Make it known to the people. We can't be like those dogs that couldn't bark, the blind leaders of the blind. I want us to be ready to share what God shares with us. He said, what you hear in the ear, shout from the housetop. But we've got to really understand God wants to, uh, us to really take the position God's given us as prophets and share what God has says. Remember what... Uh, the King Jehoshaphat said, he said, uh, trust the Lord, you will be established, believe his prophets, and you will prosper. We need that today, don't we? I'll tell you what, here's how God does his new thing. You ready? I'm reading now out of Isaiah chapter 46, verse 6 and 7, out of the New Amplified Translation, or uh, the Amplified Classic, there it is. You heard these things foretold, and now you see this fulfilled, and will you not bear witness to it? I've shown you specific new things, which this from this time forth, even hidden things kept in reserve, which you have not known. They, hidden things kept in reserve, which you did not know. They are created now, N-O-W, now, and called into being by the prophetic word. And not long ago and before today, you've never heard of them, unless you've got, mm, I already knew that. God won't do anything without first telling the prophets what he's going to do. And the prophets need to be watchmen on the wall and shouting out what they hear to the people of God so the people of God will be ready for battle. The Bible said, if the trumpet make an unsure sound, what will the people do? And we've, we've got an unsure sound when uh, people go, you know, doesn't matter how you live, God's a God just full of grace and mercy and, and everything you've done is already forgiven. No, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, if we sin willfully after we've not received the knowledge of that sin, there remains no more sacrifice for that sin, but a fearful looking of fiery indignation which shall devour the adversary. I believe some preachers need to read Hebrews again. Hebrews talks about the faith we have is superior and, and, and it says it's a new and a living way. But I'll tell you, it tells us some things about the, uh, these people who think, well, you know, God's so tolerable. I can do whatever I want to, and then, you know, if I need to, I can ask him to forgive me. No, if we sin willfully, if we just make up our mind, I'm going to do this because God's not looking. God is looking. He, we cannot escape the all-seeing eye of God. Scripture said in the book of Hebrews, we're all naked and exposed to the uh, eyes of him in whom we have to do. And it says our God is what? Our God is a consuming fire. Let me tell you something. I'll tell you, I told you a while ago, God's about to burst on the scene. He's about to do Isaiah 64, verse 1. Isaiah 64, verse 1 says, Oh, Lord, rend the heavens and come down. He's going to do that. He's going to rend the heavens and come down. But he's bringing something with him, fire. Isaiah 64, verse 1, Oh, Lord, rend the heavens and come down. And he said, the fire is going to come with him. And it says it's going to burn up the underbrush. That means those little bars and vines and things that cause us to stumble. Anything that impedes our progress. He said, I'm going to burn up the underbrush. And then he says, the fire will cause the water to boil. A lot of churches have had the word, but the dead letter kills. They need the spirit. We need a marriage between the word and the spirit. And that's what's got to take place. You don't, we need, if you just have the spirit, you're going to be weird and wild. You need the word. You need a balance. That's one of the things we need. We need to be able to balance out these experiences with the Word of God, and it, it'll always happen. But it's amazing. It's amazing. God wants us to trust Him. Hey, we can trust Him. He knows what's best for all of us, and He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. You know what a preacher told me once, uh, Pastor Jim, uh, Jim? Here's what a preacher told me. He said, oh, Bobby, oh, Bobby. I would be so afraid just to let go and let the Holy Spirit have his way in my church. No telling what would happen. I said to him, settle down, brother. I'll tell you precisely, exactly what will happen. Jesus Christ will be glorified. That's what Jesus said. He talked about the Holy Spirit. He shall glorify me. He'll take my message and translate it into you. 
Isn't that amazing? When Jesus, when when the Holy Spirit is in control, Jesus is glorified. So let's let's go ahead. You just, if you got some questions, just ask me, and we'll do the best we can to answer them and have a good time. You Amen. brought up the cancel Amen. culture, and That's great, Bobby. Why is the cancel culture coming against the true church? This is the thing. I've been a, at the end of cancel culture a couple times, sure, and yet God saved me, and. Uh, I've written a new book that'll be out in a few weeks called I'm Still Standing. That's yeah, right. Man. And uh, the cancel culture is coming against the church. What can the church do to counteract this cancel culture that's coming from the left? I think one of the things is we get we need to get back to God so we'll be bold and brave. I think the church is too cowardly right now allowing the far left and the council culture just to stomp over us, tear down. The Bible said, if the ancient landmarks are destroyed, what will the righteous do? And I'm telling you, they're trying to rewrite our history. They're, have you looked at some of the things the far left wants to teach your children in school? It's crazy. It is absolute, well, it's demonic. That's what it is. It's strong delusion and demonic when they say, well, yeah, you know, a doctor has the right to explain to a three-year-old that he could have a sex operation and change his gender. What? It said in the Bible, God made them male and female. I'm telling you guys, we're in a time when truth is falling in the street, but part of it, you ask, part of it is we sit by and let it happen. We have got to get more militant. Now, I'm not talking about guns, bombs, and bullets. I'm talking about prayer, fasting, holy living, sanctified lives, the weapons of our warfare, warfare that can pull down these, these things. But the Bible said if the righteous uh, don't do something, the, the wicked will just take over. And listen, we've got to get, uh, one of the things that has shocked me is how timid uh, the body of Christ is. And here's what the Lord told me. He said, your timidity is testimony to your carnality. Wow, that is an accusation. Your timidity is testimony to your carnality because the Bible said in the book of Proverbs, here's what it says. It says the uncompromising righteous are in authority. It says there will be as bold as a lion. The, the righteous will be as bold as a lion. It said the wicked's running and nobody's even chasing. I don't want us to breed a bunch of cowards. I want us to be crusaders. I want us to be victorious. And somehow we get that victim mentality, you know. You know what a preacher told me? He said, here's, here's my theology, Brother Bobby. If I believe, if I leave the devil alone, he'll leave me alone. I said, he's already got you. We got to resist the devil and he'll flee from us. We have got to realize that Romans, uh, what, 16, 20, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. And in Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, behold, observe, look at this. I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy. What you, to, to answer your question, the council culture is going to try to rewrite the narrative. They're going to try to say America's not good. We've got to do away with America. There's something. Uh, that, no, no. America was founded. People seeking a place to worship and a place to let Jesus be king, Lord of all. And now this council culture. Now you watch it. They're, they're, now, they're carrying down political statues. They'll try to rip the cross off the church. They're, listen. They won't be satisfied. That's one thing about this kind of demonic activity. It's never satisfied. It's always seeking whom he can devour. But we're going to take a stand. And I want to just tell you, the wicked run, here's what it says, Proverbs 28, 1 and 2. The wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are bold as lions. Listen to this verse, verse 2. It says, when there is moral rot within a nation, its government topples easy, but wise and knowledgeable leadership brings stability. We need that. That ought to be a political cry right there. That is Proverbs 28, verses 1 and 2 out of the New Living Translation. When there is moral moral rot within a nation, is there moral rot in our nation? I would say so when what? That, uh, Jay Sekulow printed that over 340,000 340, babies were murdered last year. Pa Planned Parenthood, most of it paid by your tax dollars. Now, I don't want that to happen. But see, we always go, now, you know, women, women have right. The Bible says that you, we're not supposed to murder. We're, not, we're supposed to take care of the innocent. And there's nothing more innocent than a, a little baby. And we know all. We know that. But 
Uh, I don't know how anybody could just sit by and go, well, you know, I don't want to get involved in that kind of political stuff. You're involved. You're up to your neck. One of these days, God's going to hold us accountable for how timid we've been. He said, I told you to warn the wicked of his wicked way, and you didn't do it. Now his blood will be up on your hands. And, you know, there's pastors that say, now, I don't want to get into this thing about same-sex marriage, et cetera, et cetera. This bill that they're trying to pass at age what, uh, whatever it is, uh, they're trying to muzzle the church. And I'm telling you, we do need to do everything within our power to stand against it, speak out. Remember they told the church uh, the, in the book of Acts, all right, they beat them up and threatened them. Don't you ever preach again in that name. And they just turned up the volume. That's what we got to do. We're not going to be put down, put out. The uncompromising righteous are in authority. The people will rejoice. But when the wicked man rules, the people sigh and groan. Wow. Is that true? When the wicked man rules, the people sigh and groan. I'll tell you what. Um, I, I think with uh, the present day uh, so-called presidential leadership, uh, I'm telling you guys, they're going to put this thing on a slip side so fast, it's going to be a blur if we don't put some blockade in front of it. And blockade is prayer. And we've got, we've got power in our words. Power in our words. If we'll pray, what's everything you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them and you have them. It, it says First John 5, 14, this is the confidence we have in him. If we'll ask him anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. If we know that he hear, hears us, we're totally confident we're going to get what we're asking. We need to start binding these powers of darkness. And uh, it's, it's a mess. We're in a mess. But that's what God said. He said, it's a shakeup. Here's what, here's what he told me uh, for the 2020 shepherd shot. He said, I'm sending a shakeup for a wake up. And he said, when the whole thing is done, I will shape my people to where they can be and in alignment with me so they can receive a greater glory. During these days, our focus is going to get off of the calamities and on to the creator. And I, it's going to be uh, Isaiah 40, 31. You know, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. He says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. We've got to focus on the Lord. And his, his help is adequate and it's available. And as far as today, if we'll just plug into a lot of stuff to cover. But let me tell you what, I so appreciate the Jim Baker show because you're not afraid to say what needs to be said. Some, some pro programs are going to, we've got to be very careful, brother, because they could take us off of social media. Who gives a rip? We better tell the truth about the truth. I mean, God will send angels to give out the message if we're quiet. Because God wants to wake the warrior, sound the alarm, get us to take a stand for righteousness. Listen, let me ask you. People go, well, Bobby, how can I contend? Is what we have worth fighting for? I've told us a thousand times, you and I are forging the future our grandchildren will live in. I don't want to, I want to hand this thing off better than we found it. And it's going to happen when uh, you talk about uh, civil war. Now, I'm not talking about bombs and bullets. There, there's a war for our nation, and we're going to have to stand up for righteousness. We're, we're not against politics. God could care less about Democrat or Republican. He cares about biblical issues, and that's what we've got to keep up, up, above the whole thing. And uh, just, to, just to be, I'll give you a little inside tip. Uh, I, believe, I believe we're going to see uh, uh, Donald Trump do some uh, uh, more rallies uh, before these four years, and I think in the rallies, we're going to see them turn into revival meetings. You watch this. That's what we need. That's what we need. We need these rallies and take all those energies of the rally and turn it into a real revival where the gospel's preached and the, those songs of glory are sung. You watch it. Uh, it, it it'll be, uh, the, the, he'll be a very driving force in a revival coming. Yeah, I'm telling you, we, listen, it, it'll happen. He's not our pastor. He's not uh, an evangelist. But I'm telling you, he's going to set the platform for, the, for us to flow. And so uh, you're getting ready, aren't you? Uh, because we've been silent too long. And, you know, they're really trying to silence. You, know, you, you can't say that. Uh, no, you can't. No, we have freedom of speech. We, we're free. The Son of God has made us free. We can say what we need to say. Now, you know, Peter got locked up. Bless his heart. You talk about, I was thinking about Peter. James, James and Peter got arrested, and they cut the head off of James. He's dead. He's in heaven. And Peter is expecting to be executed the next morning the same way. And what do we find Pete doing at night? Is he down just shaking and going, oh, God. No, he's sound asleep. 
what? Sound asleep. Now, that's the peace of God that passes all understanding, keeping his heart, thinking he's going to be executed the next day, sound asleep, but prayer is being made by the church unto God for him. And God hears the prayers and sends an angel, and old Pete's still asleep. I can see him, mouth probably on, he's not to have a little a slava down the side of his mouth. He's out. And here's what happened. The angel had to wake him up. And you can tell he was in a deep sleep because the angel says to him, get your shoes on. Don't forget your jacket and come on, follow me. And it says that Peter didn't understand what was happening. He wished not that it was real until they get to the, it says he walked by 16 trained soldiers and apparently he was hidden. I'll tell you, when you get into the will of God, uh, you're, you're hidden from a lot of danger that wants to destroy you. And aren't you glad? And it says that he was not, didn't know what all was happening. And they went past those 16 trained soldiers and they get to the big iron gate of the city and he goes, just opened automatically. And Pete goes to the house, knocks on the door. And remember, they hear, no, it couldn't be him. It must be his angel. But let me tell you, God always makes a way when it seems like there's no way. But I want to be, I don't want us to be nervous. I want us to be full of contentment. And it happens when we keep our focus on him. If we'll maintain, Ephesians says, uh, Philippians says, if we'll maintain an attitude of gratitude, the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will keep our heart and our mind in Christ. Okay, so let, y'all, you, you guys tell me wow, what else wow. you want to hear about. That's great. We're all, listen, Bobby, we're, we're all in the studio. We are amening. We yes. are clapping. We are writing down Amen. the scriptures as fast as we can. We are with you all the way. This is powerful, people. I pray you are getting this. And if you're not getting the, what Bobby's been talking about this whole time, Rewatch the show again. Make sure you DVR it or you go on to all our different ways of watching. And, and you can see this broadcast again. This is powerful. This is yes. why we need the, the voice of the prophet. We need yes. this network. Yes. That we have opened this summer. Absolutely. It's going forth. Yes. That's right. And it's an amazing thing. Yeah. It really and is. And we're building that hall of the prophets. That's right. And I'm hoping and praying that Bobby Connors will be one of our special visitors yes, amen. to the Hall of the Prophets. Yes. There's, a, there's a new Hall of the Prophets that's being built, our studio that we hope to have broadcasting 24 hours a day. The network's going out already 24 hours a day. And so it is so important that we all stand together. And yeah. right now, we've got to build this. And we need the income to do it. And we've been fighting for the last year. It, the devil tried to stomp us out last year. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm still standing. Amen. And, uh, Amen. We've written the book, I'm Still Standing. Yep. And uh, it's a powerful book that it really I'm, is. I, I'm excited about it coming out. Mm -hmm. But right now, oh my God, somebody has the sneak of cover. That's the new cover of the book, I'm Still Standing to Watchman's Story. God's faithfulness in dark times, past, present, and future. This is the story, how I lived through a stroke and all the other things that happened. And I'll tell you what, you're still standing. And That's God right. wants to give you the power to stand. Amen. And some of you, you say, I've done everything I know to do. Well, you stand then. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so... I, I just want to mention today, please, you that have been praying about helping finish the Hall of the Prophets studio, mm -hmm. where there'll be services there every day is my goal. And and then with television, and uh, we're going to be doing more and more television mm -hmm. through that great studio complex yeah, there that so exciting. is already, so we exciting. broke ground and yeah. we're ready to do it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, have the people join today, would you? Yes, amen. And in, in giving that $1,000 or that $500. That's right. And you can do that today by joining the Hall of the Prophets Groundbreaker Gold Member Club. And, of course, we want to send you a gift back in return for joining and partnering with us and this ministry for what we are going to see happen in these last days. When you join that club, we are going to send you two of the Voice of the Prophets mugs along with two of 
of the PTL Voice of the Prophets blankets. Your name will also be put on in a plaque in the atrium of the brand new building. And mom, dad, remember, send in your prayer request that we will put in, in the foundation as we lay the foundation for that new building, the Hall of the Prophets. Right. So join that $1,000 club today. We also have the $500 donation club, which is the Hall of the Prophets Groundbreaker member for a $500 donation to the ministry. You will receive one of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mugs along with one of the PTL Voice of the Prophets blankets. But I love what Mr. Bobby just said. He said, we are to stand boldly declaring that we are not ashamed of the gospel. And that is exactly what we are going to do. When we build that building, we are saying as a testament to the Lord, God, come, we're going to gather together with one another, praying, seeking God as we look forward to the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. So you got the five hundred dollar yes. club. We've got the thousand dollar club, and for those who cannot do either one of those, we have my eighty one. That's right. In honor of your eighty first birthday, you can join the Hall of the Prophets eighty one dollar donation to the ministry, and you'll receive two of the PTL Voice of the Prophets mugs. And I'm urging people this week, we're studying the revelation Mm -hmm. and I'm going to the next part. This is all on video, the part two. Right. And so we have a complete package right now. My revelation teaching and my two books that are about the last days that are so important. Absolutely. There's nothing more that can be said in those books than I, than I wrote. Yes. And that was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So prosperity and the coming apocalypse. That doesn't mean how to get rich in the last (laughs) days. It means beware. Don't fall in love with the world. Mm. You know, fall in love with Jesus. Amen. Because the apocalypse of the end times is coming. Mm. And so then we have the refuge of how to look and live in the future. (laughs) Right. Living in a Christian community mm-hmm. and how to survive. That's right. the key to survival. Amen. And along with that, you'll receive Jim's revelation teaching that he's been on DVD that he's been teaching for the past a uh, few weeks here. And also the actual revelation revealed 14 DVD disc, which is 30 hours of him teaching. You receive that as well. So all four of those for $150 to donation to the ministry, and that includes your shipping and your handling. So go to the phone right now, call us at 1-888-988-1588 and order that bundle. Or if you already got that and you want to just be a part and help us with the whole Hall of the Prophets, which, which means the voice of the prophets will go forward Amen. from this hall, from this studio. It's a very exciting time to... Get involved and be a part. And people like Bobby Connor coming to us and pre, you know, I call Bobby, I uh, forgive me, but I call you a preacher prophet. Like you preach, but you're a prophet. And, you know, I remember real quick, I just have to throw this in because I know. I, you know, you know, a, a true prophet when the prophecies come to pass. Amen. And um, I remember, Jim, when Miss Kathleen, and she was just with us the other day here again, helping us and volunteering. And but but, you know, Bobby went to the church that she was at in California many, 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 many years ago. She she would watch you on television as she was raising her children and all that. But Bobby literally, she never met you. She didn't know anything about you. She never dreamt in a million years she would be living in the Ozarks. And she, she Bobby said to her, one day you're going to work for Jim Baker. <laughs> and it really came to pass. It had it was yeah. an act of God to get her to move to the Ozarks. And she literally just volunteered and she came to work for us and for you, Jim, and became your executive for assistant yeah. for many wow. years. Amen. I mean, it's just a and story she, of God. She's in retirement, faithfulness. but she lives yeah. here and she's Oh, and she still, volunteers and yeah. she helps us. She's, she's like family. Yes. Like, you know. Yeah. Tammy Sue's birthday was done by her. Yes. <laughs> yes. But those are just little things when you know, you know, it's a, it's things like that. And that's what we'll be offering when you come to 
the Amen. studio, Hall of the Prophets studio, we call it. The voice of the prophets, to give a voice to the prophets, mm. a platform to Amen. the prophets. It's very, very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Our time's almost gone yes, today. Yes, absolutely. I can't believe it. But I have 25 questions that I've written <laughs> down here that I want to ask Bobby Connor. And Bobby, we've gotten to three. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three questions is all I I've gotten it. to ask today. I love it. So and good. so the fourth one, tell me about the Equality Act and what you think it means. All righty. All righty. Uh, the Equality Act is a, 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 a bright-sounding thing, but it's not equality at all. Here's, here's what I've got written down to say to Jim concerning the, the, you can see it right here. You can see I've got it written down. This is what I'm, my answer to Jim. Urgent. Vote no. We, you, we need your vote today. The so-called Equality Act will criminalize Christianity. They'll make it illegal to tell what the Bible says and to take biblical standards. Call your congressman, vote against it. We do know it's not equality. We want, all men are created equal. We want that, but we don't want this thing that's going to muffle and muzzle the mouth of the Christians and make us uh, violate biblical principles and same-sex marriage, et cetera, et cetera. I'm telling you, religious freedoms, is, 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 that's, it. that's what's in their, their, their eyesight right now. They've got the scope and the rifle on uh, religious freedoms and religious freedom is really under attack right now. So uh, we do not want this to pass. Is We need to vote no. Boy, you have said that it is time to awaken, to treasure truth. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, treasure truth? The Bible teaches us that we'll know the word and, and uh, the truth will set us free. And that's what we got to do. Psalms 100 and 100, Psalms 119, verse 130 says, The entrance of your word, the penetration of your light, it will bring understanding and a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. And that's what we got to do. We got to, truth is uh, not just a, a principle, it's a person. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And the word became flesh. We've got to get back to biblical principle. And that's what we've got to rescue is truth. And it says, like we, like the Word of God says, truth is falling in the street. And we've got to rescue truth so that truth can rescue us. Uh, Romans 8.32 says, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Bible said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We've got to get back to what the Bible says, because the Bible is filled with principles and precepts and teachings that teach us how to walk in an upright way. And uh, we're, we're the far left wants us to do away with the Bible. Wasn't it Nadler the other day that said, oh, we don't think the Word of God has any place here in politics. Wow, that's not how America was founded, was it? We were founded where people would have a real uh, encounter with the gospel and the encounter with Jesus. And so we've got to stand up for truth. And uh, that's going to be a real, real battle, but it's, it's one worth fighting. We've got to rescue truth, truth being the Word of God. And it said we've got to preach the truth. We've got to live the truth. We've got to be real standard barriers of the truth and, and state what the Bible says about issues. You know, uh, people go, well, you know, uh, it's, it's not politically correct. I don't care about that. I want us to be biblically accurate. We need to have people teaching out of Romans chapter 1. Uh, the Romans chapter 1 tells us a lot about same-sex marriage, about transgender and all of that, uh, and, and none of it is good. And we need to tell the truth about the truth. We need to love people enough to tell them the truth. God loves everybody. Don't, don't get me wrong there. But we have got to tell the truth about the truth because only then will it be activated in our life. We've got to become doers of the word and not hearers only. James 1, 22 said we must become doers and not mere hearers. And uh, I'm telling you, God is ready to move on our behalf if we'll just line up with him. And just simply say, God, not my will, but thy will be done. I want to surrender to the word and the ways of God. And God will lead us in a very clear way. Psalms 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It says in Psalms 18, 28, that he will light my lamp and my lamp, my spirit, and it'll flood my whole life with light. 
Every one of us should be praying each day, Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be flooded with revelatory light. You will have a grasp and a comprehension of the ways of God. We need to get into the Word so we'll know the ways of God. Hosea said it this way, my people, the people of God, are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We've got to pack our heart full of the Word of God because it's our weapon. It's a sword. We've got the high praises of God in our mouth and a double-edged sword in our hand. That's how we're going to do battle. Uh, and, and if we'll just fill our heart with the Word of God. Remember every time in Matthew 4, every time the devil threw a temptation at Jesus Christ in the wilderness, what does Jesus say? It is written. That's what you and I need to know. What the Bible says about any issue the devil brings up. As the Bible said, if we'll resist the devil, he'll flee. I like that, don't you? I like the fact if we'll just resist him, he'll flee from us. If we'll draw near to God, God will draw near to us. And I'm telling you, just to be quite frank with you, the devil is more afraid of you than you are him. Because the devil already knows he's defeated. The Bible says Christ spoiled principalities and powers and made an open show of them, triumphing over them in the cross. Remember in Revelations, uh, Jim studied Revelation a lot. Remember when Jesus resurrected, what did he have? Oh, he had keys of death, hell, and the grave. I say this way, the devil can't even lock up his own door. You and I have the keys, Matthew 18, 18. We have keys and power to bind. We've been given power. That's what it says. It says we're ambassadors for Christ. I looked up the word ambassador. It means a senior representative sent out with authority. You and I have been given the same authority as our elder brother, Jesus. And Matthew 18 says, all power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So I'm excited about that. But to answer this thing about uh, uh, this horrible law, it's going to try to cause, cause Christianity to be muzzled. Boy, it was time. We got to go. Yeah. I, I, wow. This is powerful. He really is the talking Bible because Amen. he knows he, he has hidden the word in his heart Amen. for his whole lifetime. Amen. And so, Nena, one thought, the generators. That's right. Uh, the new ME, more energy generators. The big one. Yes, the big one. The nice one is available at the website, jimbakershow.com. And we want to remind you that we now have financing payment options available. When you go to the website, you can see all the offers that are available. You want to take advantage of that. That promotion will last for the month of March. And so we want to make sure you understand that. But yes. remember, now is the time to get your preparedness tools. That's right. This is an amazing fuelless generator. So no gasoline needed so you want to go and see those options available and you can go to jimbakershow.com to see all the financing options that's right okay so that is available yes. now and then the price is going up again because yes. of the cost of that's everything right. absolutely that's right. and when we when you were talking about copper it was it's gone up in just one year, just this year, it's gone up 55%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we're just seeing massive increase in ever. I mean, in all these different industries, yes. and it is affecting the cost yeah. of these products. Right? We have to go, and we want to thank Bobby Connor for being with us today. And I want you to come back tomorrow. Call us 1-888-988-1588. It's toll free. Order your products. And remember that God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love you. Thank you, Bobby.